Welcome back, everybody. It's time for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most significant naval battles in modern history. This is the Battle of Manila Bay. It was fought May 1st, 1898. It was the, the first major engagement of the Spanish-American War, and it was significant because it reshaped uh, world power in a sense because it put an end to Spanish colonial rule in the Philippines and obviously began uh, American uh, colonial uh, influence, if you want, uh, in the Pacific, and that lasted well into the 20th century. Uh, this was fought between American forces under Commodore George Dewey, uh, which engaged uh, and destroyed a specific, uh, the Pacific Spanish qu squadron uh, under Rear Admiral Patricio Montoyo. The, uh, the battle mainly was fought with four protected cruisers uh, for the Americans, two gunboats, uh, that were engaged on the Spanish side, two protected cruisers, four unprotected cruisers, and a gunboat. Uh, the only losses, the only death for the Americans was from heat stroke rather than uh, from a battle death. There were 77 dead, 271 wounded for the Spanish. Uh, one of their protected, one of the American protected cruisers was damaged. Two of the Spanish protected cruisers were sunk along with five unprotected cruisers. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the engaged forces in this battle, which was four protected cruisers, two gunboats on the American side, two protected cruisers, four unprotected cruisers, and a gunboat on the Spanish. We're going to kind of whittle that down. We're just going to go with four heavy cruisers on the American side, two heavy, four light on the Spanish side to kind of simulate those protected and unprotected cruisers as they would have been called at the time. I'm not going to edit uh, and kind of create the actual ships. I'm just going to go with whatever it gives us. And we're just going to try to fight this battle at 10,000 meters in 1898. So this isn't meant to be an exact replica of, uh, I didn't want to design, uh, an exact replica of that battle. Uh, it's just meant to kind of fight with those conditions just to give us something to talk about. So we can talk a little bit about uh, the Battle of Manila Bay in the comments, if you'd like. But uh, it seemed like we had a lot of fun with that last battle that was fought with units from this time period. So I thought it'd be fun to do another one before we get into some other historical battles. And uh, you can always, you are more than welcome to suggest historical battles that we should try. I've done a number of those already, but obviously I might, I might revisit some of those just because... Uh, of all the changes that have been made to the game, it gives us a lot more freedom with that. But in the past, we've done uh, the Battle of Cornell, we've done the Denmark Strait, we've done the Falkland Islands, uh, we have done, um, what else have we done? I'm trying to think here. Oh, hello, here we go. One of the other battles we did was the uh, the Battle of Tsushima, and uh, I skipped ahead a little bit here until we got into the action, and now we are Starting to spot the enemy a little bit. I want to close. Close this formation some. So we can get a little better on our aim. And it looks like this is probably some of his light cruisers coming in here. And we do have a few of our ships already aiming at him. I want to try and take him out. So we're going to focus everybody on that one ship right now. So we've got the Cambridge, the Frederick, the Canberra, the Colorado. What do we got? We've got nine inch guns. Looks like that's pretty much what all of our ships have. Colorado's taken some hits, but nothing significant so far. We do have some torpedoes. Although the range is probably pretty poor on those. Wait, what? Our torpedo range is 1.6 kilometers. Well, it is 1898. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised by that. What's our accuracy right now? About 4% with the 9-inch guns. Hopefully we can score. If we can score a nice direct hit with these 9-inch guns, we might be able to get a pretty quick kill on this light cruiser. He's only got two heavy cruisers, so if I can knock out the light cruisers, I'll definitely have fire superiority on the heavies. The protected cruisers as they would have been at the time. We're still kind of getting into position. We've got a 14, 
uh, and a half percent own crew speed bonus, a five percent bonus for the tight own spread. There was a big hit. He just landed on me. Well, we're landing some real big ones on him too. This is the Isabel Francisca. And what's it got? It's got seven inch guns, only zero to one inch of armor. I've got up to seven inches on my protected cruisers. So he's got two rows here. We're all kind of in one line on my side. Oh yeah, we're gonna take this thing out soon. Oh there, I think we got him. We got flooding. Uh, it's not enough, it's only four compartments. We're gonna need a little more than that. There we go. So we got our first sinking, one of the light cruisers. It looks like we, uh, we've got a nice uh, spread between the heavy, the bigger guns, which is firing on the purification right now, and then our lighter guns, which are, um, oh, so purification's got 11 inch guns. Yeah, it might be good to take that one out sooner rather than later. And our fives and our threes, oh, we just got an ammo detonation with a three inch shell on the Almanza, and we took it down. That was beautiful. All right, so now it's four on four, and he's got two light cruisers. So we may be recreating the decisive victory by the Americans in this one. We're going to start turning this way. I'd really like to take out Purification's 11-inch guns as quickly as possible. Because one of those could easily score an ammo detonation on me if it gets a good penetration. See what Cristobal Colon has. Oh, Christopher Columbus gets his own, gets his own ship. Never mind, he was Italian. So far, so good. Hey, everybody, why why is our fourth one not firing? Oh, it is. It's just not. Is it not part of this? Now it is. Formation. All right, so let's get back to the secondaries firing separately. Because that was working really well. We sank that other light cruiser with secondaries. It was a three inch shell that did him in. We got another ship back here that we don't see yet. It's gotta be another light cruiser because these are the two heavies right here. Now oh, there's another nice hit. So let's talk about the ships that were engaged in this battle for the U.S. It was the USS Olympia, which was the flagship at the time, the most significant of the vessels. Had a, uh, had four 8-inch guns mounted in pairs on two turrets, plus 10 5-inch guns and six torpedo tubes. We're lighting up purification right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and just kind of keep circling here. Uh, the USS Baltimore which is a protected cruiser, 4,600 tons. Quite a bit smaller. Uh, these other ships were quite a bit smaller than the Olympia. Uh, but Baltimore also had four 8-inch guns on single mounts. Uh, Rally was 3,200 tons, had one 6-inch and 10 5-inch guns. Uh, and the Boston was also a 3,200-ton protected cruiser, two 8-inch guns and six 6-inch six guns. On the Spanish side, let's take a look here. 
The Reina Cristina was the flagship. It was an unprotected cruiser, 3,000 tons, 6.4-inch 6, 6 guns. It had a top speed of 16 knots, and it was the, the fastest of the Spanish vessels. Uh, the Castilla was an unprotected cruiser of 3,300 tons, uh, four 6-inch guns, two 4.7-inch guns. Uh, it had 8-inch guns, but they had been removed to equip shore batteries. Interesting decision. The Don Antonio de Uloya, Uloya, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, unprotected cruiser, only 1,100 tons. So definitely a smaller fleet. You can kind of see as you start to look at the numbers, as you start to look at the speed and the uh, tonnage on the Spanish ships, why they were at such a disadvantage. The Isabel just sunk. So this is going pretty much our way at the moment. Really, the, the Americans just outgunned, outclassed, outmaneuvered. Uh, they, they had everything going for them in this battle. In recognition of George Dewey's leadership, uh, Commodore Dewey's leadership during the Battle of Manila Bay, uh, they created a medal known as the Dewey Medal that was presented to officers and sailors that were under his command. Dewey was uh, eventually promoted to a special rank, Admiral of the Navy. Uh, and he, uh, he actually ran for president in 1900, uh, but he actually ended up withdrawing and uh, endorsed William McKinley, who was running for re-election. And then he, uh, Dewey, ended up on the, the board of the U.S. Navy, and he was a big, had a big hand in helping to grow the Navy up until his death uh, right uh, in the middle of World War I. I'm going to Boston this week, and there's a Dewey Square in Boston. Purification's going down, too. This has been really one-sided, which is interesting because, oh, there's an ammo detonation on this guy. Because uh, it's not even like I did anything to build these ships up and make them more powerful than the Spanish fleet. We went with, the, you know, the same year technology, so I expected it to build similar powered vessels. Honestly, these Spanish ships are way better gunned than the historic ones were. I mean, these guys got 11 inch guns and they've got 7 inches of armor. Olympia, uh, the US flagship, actually served all the way through World War I. 6,500 tons, quite a bit. I mean it was double the displacement of any of the Spanish ships in this battle. Had a speed of almost 22 knots, which is six knots faster than any of the Spanish ships were. It's actually um, still afloat. It's uh, over in Philadelphia. You can see the Olympia today. But it had, uh, actually only had 4.75 inches uh, of deck armor. Four and a half inches on the barbettes, three and a half on the turrets. It's all, all you, Cristobal Colon. Well, not yet. We still have to take out these others. What's going on here? Oh, Colorado is going to the rear because they took some damage. I guess we could probably get in closer now, huh? Maybe get up and use some of these torpedoes, shall we? Oh, yeah, there's another big uh, ammo detonation on these guys. Purification, you are done, sir. I think we got enough flooding on you. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, we, his pumps are staying on top of it. Ah, I think we got him now. I want to get in range for the torpedo tubes. Where'd Cristobal Colon... Oh, pig... Big ammo detonation with a five inch gun. You know what? Let's uh, turn off the guns. At least make this a little interesting, huh? We need to get, get within 1.6 kilometers to be able to fire with the torpedoes. Gonna be easier said than done, I think. And Cristobal Colon, I thought, was out there somewhere. Did we sink him and I just didn't notice it? I don't think we did. I don't know if we're going to be able to catch this guy. 
Now he's going for 14.9 knots. We've got more speed than that. Oh yeah, those torpedoes are coming for you, buddy. I don't know where my torpedo tubes are. I've got to assume I've got one up front. Oh, he's firing one at me. Look at that. I don't think so, dude. I do not think so. Oh, it might hit the Cambridge. Turn, Cambridge. Yeah, we're good. Nice try, buddy. You're just lucky we haven't opened up with our guns yet, that's all. It's coming, though. All right, you know what? Oh, we did fire some torpedoes. There we go. Let's see you dodge those, buddy. Oh, beautiful. Bye-bye. I guess we had sunk the Cristobal Cologne. I just missed it. All right, let me know your thoughts about that. Let's talk about the uh, historic battle of Manila Bay. And let me know what other battles you'd like to see. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Drop a like if you would. Enter the contest. We are in the home stretch uh, for our first of five giveaways. Uh, as soon as we hit 18,000 subscribers, and I think as of recording this, we are less than 300 away. So it should be in the next couple of days. Last chance to enter, and then we'll do it all again. Thanks for watching.